Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Thank you. As I said, Mr. Speaker, the union movement is not afraid of competition when there is a fair and well balanced framework for it. But unfortunately, the Conservative government wants to attack unions. Mr. Speaker, as you know, for the NDP and for myself, Private Members Bill C-525 is sadly a new ep episode where the Conservatives are violating the right to unionization. I want to point out that we need to see this initiative as more than an isolated event, rather a further attack by the Conservative government against the union mem movement and therefore the middle class. Once again, the union, the government is using particularly dubious tactics to advance an ideological agenda. Like the previous bill, Bill C-377, which aimed at uh, weakening worker organization, this bill is doing the same. But the right of association is good for the economy, including the protection of millions of quality jobs in Canada. It is also recognized in international law and by our charter. The union struggles through the decades have built uh, uh, communities which are stronger and stronger domestic demand as well, as well as good jobs and improved buying power. They have also enabled women to get into the labor market in greater numbers and helped gu help guarantee pensions for workers. But come back to this latest attack by conservatives against people uh, working in our country. This bill denies the legitimate right of employees to unionize with just with 50 percent or more of signatures. This is a very important Im principles. Bill C-525 would not only have a higher threshold for the number of cards to be signed, but it would break with our traditions. This is unheard of, unprecedented, and troubling. Employees who do not take part in the decision making are automatically counted as being against the idea of having a union. Come now to an, a concrete example. If you were working in an organization with 100 employees who wanted to exercise their right and have an organization to help protect those rights, that is a union, then there would be a vote. But according to the rules under this bill, all the employees, not just those who take the initiative to vote, would be counted. This is sneaky and underhanded. Out of the 100, if 49 vote for the union and only 49 people vote, it would be 100 percent of those who voted. But that would be a failure because the others did not vote. All the employer has to do is give a few people a day off so that they stay home, and there you go. The results are are not what you would expect. To top it all off, in a decertification process, those who do not vote are considered to have voted to get rid of the union. So this is a rigged process and is actually outrageous. Anti-union bill is the last attack of this conservative government to weaken the labor movement and the capacity of workers to organize themselves in their workplace. To preserve the process where people sign membership cards is the best way to protect workers from the pressures and the tactics of some employers. To impose a vote is to open the door to threats and intimidation. And the studies are clear. When we take that road, the success to form a union drops. It's a 10 to 20 percent decrease. It's a huge difference for thousands of workers, of men and women, 
who will not be able to benefit from a union. And what is especially vicious in this bill is when the vote comes, all of those who didn't vote are considered to have voted against the union. This is incredible. And the best is when you have a vote to kill a union, all those who didn't vote are counted as they have voted in favor of the end of the union. Can't we all see that this is unfair, that it is a biased process against employees? One has to wonder why the Conservatives want to bring in such a system for employees under federal jurisdiction. Every province that has adopted this method has seen negative impact in Ontario. When similar legislation was passed in 1995, the number of accreditation applications dropped by 40 percent and the percentage of success dropped un to under 50 percent. And the same happened in British Columbia at another point. If the Conservatives are saying that they want to work to help the economy, they are not thinking about the middle class workers in doing so. Once again, they have chosen the interests of businesses over those of ordinary people. Conservatives want to make us swallow the idea that there would be no impact on the ability of Canadians and Quebecers to join a union or create one. But this is false. When you have Walmart and Kushta, which is a, brand, a company in Quebec that has no unions, there is a good reason. They are ignoring what's happening. If you take even the slightest interest in the academic literature on this subject, you will see clearly uh, the negative effect. The rate of success in unionization attempts has dropped by 9%, according to uh, Wilfrid Laurier University researcher Susan Johnson. The member for Wetaskiwin certainly has not looked at the studies because if he had done so, he would have understood that the current accreditation method by using membership cards reduces unfair and dishonest techniques that might be used by employers. 50% fewer employers try to have anti-unionization campaigns with the traditional method. And this means a better work climate and more respectful relations. But if we open the door to the use of threats or potential punishments, loss of jobs, or other scare tactics, this will not be useful. The time between the accreditation application and the vote is a key time. The longer this period lasts, the more employers tend to take action and to try to negatively influence the opinion of employees. It is clear that this bill will go further than we can even have thought possible. We have to think about what we want as a society. Do we want a more egalitarian society like we have always had in, in Canada or more like the American model? It seems that this government has chosen this bill, like the previous version, the previous bill, shows clearly that the Conservatives want low-wage jobs and workers to be at the mercy of employers. But I think that the NDP will defend workers always. Oh. Sorry. Il devrait plutôt chercher à faire en sorte de renforcer nos communautés et non s'attaquer aux quelques acquis de la classe moyenne. Il est cependant malheureux de constater qu'après avoir échoué à relancer l'économie, les conservateurs abdiquent sur la création et le maintien de bons emplois. Avant de donner la leçon de démocratie aux travailleurs, les conservateurs doivent faire un petit travail d'introspection. Les gens se posent de sérieuses questions sur votre manière de gérer l'État, sur la fermeture de Parlement ou sur les scans. Alors, 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 order, please. L'honorable député de Wetaskiwin. The honorable member for Wetaskiwin, on a point of order. I'm getting the translation now, Mr. Speaker. I wasn't getting the translation. I'm most interested in what my colleague has to say. Okay. 
okay, the interpretation was not working. You have about one more minute for your speech. You could uh, give us your last page. If the government, Mr. Speaker, really wants to do something to help the labor market and families' living conditions, it needs to protect employees' rights, it needs to strengthen our communities and not attack the few gains that the middle class has made. It is unfortunate to see that after failing to help the economy, the Conservatives are abdicating the preservation of quality jobs. They have failed lamentably before giving any lessons in democracy to workers. The Conservatives need to think about what they are doing. They are closing Parliament and trying to uh, stifle people's uh, right to speak, but workers in this country know that they can count on the NDP to protect their interests. In 2015, we will certainly form a new government that will respond to people's interests.